When it comes to serving, most players either want more consistency, they want more precision, able to place the ball anywhere, or they're trying to create more power. So when it comes to more power, often players think that they have to change a lot. Their biomechanics, all of how their body moves and so forth. And it may be true, depending on how much time and money you have to spend on that. Now, if you would like to get a faster serve immediately, focus on the racket speed. The speed of the racket prior to contact makes the ball go faster or slower. So if I'm going slowly as I'm touching the ball, my ball and my result is slow. If my racket speeds up, then I create a faster ball, a result that is more powerful because I've created more speed prior to touching the ball. Now to do that, we need to throw the racket at the ball. Often players are trying to create more power, they create more tension. The muscles tighten up, your arm goes slower, or you start developing some injuries, and or I should say. So when you're serving, we want looseness because we need arm speed. We need speed prior to contact. I can't say it often enough. My target is up there. My target is the ball that I've just tossed, and that is there. So I need power going upwards, up to contact. After the point of contact, ball is gone. I'm not influencing the ball anymore because it's already flying in the air. Ball has been launched, it's gone. So I'm going from here to contact. Now, in this demonstration, I'm not using my legs, I'm not jumping, I'm not creating any of the additional power using my body because the emphasis here really is about that arm speed, racket speed prior to contact point. So looseness, breathing up to the ball, all of that helps create a faster racket so that when I touch the ball, my ball is going to leave my racket fast. There's a few ways to improve that. You can use some tools like this yellow line, for example. Go through it and swing. <sighs> Breathing out. And again, my focus is from here, from my trophy position, going upwards. And for those of you that don't know what I mean, I'm in that trophy position. That's my position after I've tossed the ball and I'm loading. Now, whether I'm using platform stance or pinpoint stance, both are completely fine as long as you're balanced, strong, and feeling like you can launch your body and your racket that way, where your target is. The court on the other end is the result of your throw, of your contact point, of what happens here, you end up getting a result on the other side. However, when you focus on the target on the other side, first of all, your brain will see your target as down. Your target is through the net. So subconsciously, your brain will always give you that signal to hit down. But be careful about that one because that's a dangerous one. If you hit down, where's the ball gonna go? Down. So create your target over the net, but your number one target is above you. When you're serving, your toss is there. Your toss and your contact point is above you. So here's how you can practice it. Now you may ask, is this for a first or is it for a second serve? What is the difference between a first and a second serve. 
contact point on the first serve will be more in front. So therefore, we're creating a more jumping and, and, and on a first serve. Therefore, we're creating more of a movement forward and up. Whereas on a second serve, all of that racket speed is going upwards to create more spin. You can also use tennis balls to help you create that power going upwards. Notice how I'm going to stop my arm after I've let it go. Because again, we want to focus on from here, creation of power to there. Afterwards, arm can relax. Ball is gone. And as I'm throwing this ball, I'm aiming up for the ceiling of this building. And why would you think that is? Because I'm going from here, from my trophy position, up towards contact. I'm gonna go pick up some of these balls so I can show you some more exercises. <laughs> that's what happens when you only bring 10 balls to the tennis court, but that's okay. Another exercise you can do for creating more power on your serve is to throw. Throw a, a strip or use anything a little bit longer that creates that feeling of length. What we don't want to feel on a serve is crammed, tight, short. We want to feel long, like we're extending, reaching, feeling of that extension towards the ball. You're powering your body and your arm towards the ball. At higher levels, it is your chest you can think about. Sorry. It's your chest that you think about going up towards that ball because that will create the pull on the arm. The arm isn't the driver of power. The arm is a result of the body pulling it. And the upper body is triggered by the legs. And again, that's if you're a higher level player, you can think that way and understand that, where your legs and your hip will then trigger the chest to move, going upwards, and then the arm is triggered to release and throw. Now just power at its purest, to summarize it, comes from more racket speed, not from more tightness, not from more strength necessarily, it comes from more racket speed prior to contact. So we need it here. One other thing I like to do sometimes with my players is ask them to stop at contact. So they really see what happens when you create racket speed prior to impacting the ball. You try and stop when you make contact with the ball. So all of that power was created prior to me hitting the ball. Of course, the ball ends up going a little slower than it normally would because I'm already putting on the brakes prior to contact, but it still emphasizes how much speed can be created here. You do that a few times, and then you let it go. And then you all of a sudden feel that power, that release through contact. And the more you involve your legs, the more power your upper body and the arm we'll get. Thanks for watching this one. And I'm going to go into some more consistency, how to create consistency on the serve, as well as how to create precision on the serve next. Thank you.